He's so optimistic about our business. He's got unique um, skills because he kind of grew up in the business. And so he's always knew he was going to be a miner. Yeah. I love his his uh, can-do, positive attitude. It's very contagious. Red Conger's 40-year career in the mining industry began during hard times. Shortly after moving to the Chino Mine near Silver City, New Mexico, the metals industry would face a dramatic downturn. Copper prices would fall to historic lows as the effects of a global recession dried up demand for the red metal. A young engineer working for one of the nation's biggest mining companies would embrace technology that would mean survival. Solution Extraction Electro Winning, SXEW, would make it possible to mine low-grade ore at a low cost. SXEW was interesting. We, we built the first one at Tyrone. We could see the benefit of that over at Chino, so we bought Chino. And then here was Red, and of course Red bought into the technology right away. He's a guy that will take a good idea and, uh, and just keep expanding it. As his career expanded at Phelps Dodge and Freeport McMoran, Conger gained an industry-wide reputation as a leader in change management and production efficiency, something that would help to steer the company through tough times. Shortly after the historic merger of Phelps and Freeport, the industry would face another dramatic downturn. And so Red jumped in with both feet. We went through lots of different scenarios to try to figure out you know, how to manage the business in that environment, always focusing on being positive about the long term. And that's one of the things that Red has is a sense of, of optimism. And so while we had to take some very difficult steps at that time, we had to cut our workforce, which was a very tough thing. Freeport McMoran's North American flagship mine, Morency, was particularly hard hit, and it is where Red Conger and his team would get to work. Marinci was going through some a time period where they needed to reinvent themselves, so to speak. They were, you know, high cost. The production was wasn't where people wanted it, and and so we were looking at ways to survive really the low copper price period that we were in. At the same time, we, we needed a technical solution, we needed a people solution. To the, the business improvement teams, you know, he's taken new technology and utilizing it to the, to the betterment of the, of the company, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can't manage the mining industry the way we did 40 years ago. Teamwork would be the hallmark of an organization that did much more than survive the economic ebbs and flows. Freeport McMoran's production team under Congress leadership would marshal an era of productivity. Red likes to say our trucks are old enough to vote, most of them. Um, you know, which is kind of unheard of in the uh, mining business. And so we do a life cycle plan where we do a, a plan rebuild of those, comp of those um, pieces of equipment, trucks, shovels, and that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, that, that has allowed us then to, to, to target what we call our path to uh, 90 percent. So that's 90 percent availability for trucks and shovels. Um, and, and we've achieved that and, and feel pretty good about that. 90 percent availability is no simple task. It's extremely rare in the industry. That path toward the goal began more than 15 years ago. It has involved collaboration both inside and outside the company, cutting edge data monitoring technology, and leadership. And just in the last you know, decade or so, we, we've really been able to push it over the hump uh, as a result of having a leader like Red. That, that listens to you, allows you to go do your job, you know, believes that, that you'll do it correctly, believes that you'll, you'll make the right investments in the equipment and, and drive productivity for the company. A true leader has vision that sees beyond the immediate or the way things have always been done. 
in Red Conger's organization, such challenges are embraced. When you're able to take a step back and ask the questions, well, you know, the copper price is low, are we doing everything we can to maximize our pits? Um, steepening our slopes wasn't something us at a site could think about because we we're, you know, dealing with maybe some slope failures, you know, some stuff that, ha that challenges us every day. And so getting the question, are you sure your slope angles are what they should be, gave us the, you know, and could they be steeper, gave us the idea of, well, let's change how we do it. Let's see what we can do. And I think, you know, Red's leadership qualities led us right into being able to steepen our slopes and provide or get safer pits. Red really created this culture where, you know, you're not, you're actually expected to ask for help. Um, the, the expectation was there and you're also expected to give help when help is needed. Probably the most notable example was the, the plant commissioning that we had for the Cerro Verde concentrator here in, uh, a couple years ago. And we sent, you know, over a hundred folks from, from North America to go help out this, the commissioning of this uh, 240,000 ton a day concentrator at Cerro Verde turned out to be a spectacular ramp up and a, and a one of a kind success from safety, from productivity all, all around. Two expansions in 10 years at Cerro Verde were significant projects for the people of Arequipa, Peru, providing wastewater treatment for a major river and clean drinking water for the citizens. Uh, we had made a commitment to, uh, to build a water treatment plant for the town of Arequipa. And uh, a lot of people could have probably figured out how to get out of having to do that. It was not cheap, but it was the right thing to do. And Red pushed that, and we were able to uh, provide potable water for the whole town of Arequipa, the, the largest, the first large community in Peru to have potable water for the whole community. And it changes people's lives. That's a big deal. So this is the kind of work that we achieve because Red challenged us. Red challenged us and made us work with the authorities, all together involving the social leaders, showing people that dialogue was the best solution to identify opportunities to work together. Mining, farmers, community. Winning as a team has really been something that's differentiated us as a company uh, and, and we do it for major plant commissionings uh, or you know specific challenges that a site might be working through and it works as a developmental opportunity as well as a, an opportunity to to go and solve something and, and work as as a team. Working as a team spreads beyond the Freeport organization to other stakeholders and partners. To have our people wake up every morning and go above and beyond because they want to, right? They just, they truly want Freeport to be better and they want to do their part. And you can't pay people to do that, right? That is much more than just a job for them. It is truly a way of life and they are so invested in Freeport's success. And I tie that really to Red, to Red, the culture that Red set. It, we've, we deal with other companies and they don't have that kind of a culture. It's a big deal.